I walked into a French studio and said, I'd like to be a director. And they said, uh, well, that's all right. You start as a tea boy. And uh, I was a tea boy. In those days, I was 17 years old, and I had a script, and I used to carry the tea to Mr. de Vivier. And in the evening, I used to take the script and do all my homework and imagine that I was going to direct the scene the next day and work out all the camera angles and plan it all. And I'd go on the floor, hand Mr. de Vivier's tea, and then watch him direct. And to my absolute horror, he's not directing the way that I had figured that he should be. All the little camera designs I'd done the evening before and that the artist should come in left and they would do this, that and the other thing, he's gonna put the camera in totally the wrong place. And as he always insisted on two cups of tea, when I took the second cup of tea along, I would say to him, Monsieur Vivier, um, why have you put the camera there? And he would quite rightly say, what's it got to do with you? And I'd say, well, you see, I stayed up all night doing my little designs and I planned this and I reckon that the camera should be over there and I can't understand why you put it there. And I really blush when I think about this because he took time off to look at my little designs and have a great deal of patience with me and say, oh, well, if you'd have done that, lad, you'd have got into trouble there and so-and-so. And... -so. and it really was tremendous until one day the producer walked on the floor and saw the whole unit at a standstill whilst Mr. de Vivier was giving an instructional lesson <laughs> to the tea boy. I was fortunate enough to work with some of the greats and you say, when I become a director, I will do some of those things, I will respect those traditions, particularly with Carol Reed, who I was lucky enough to be his assistant for about five years, and I consider my film father, and in turn today, anything that I can hand on to my assistants who work for me, I'm only too happy to do so, and it's a great thrill when one of them becomes Peter Yates uh, and makes bullets. Cubby Broccoli, who's a very old friend of mine, he said, how would you like to make Goldfinger? And I said, I would absolutely love to because I have a very clear idea of what um, I would like to do and how to go. And it was a very happy experience. Everybody thinks there is a formula and I don't think there is. We've had many imitators. The normal history of series is that they get worse and worse. The reason being is that the people who make them become fat, rich, and lazy. There may be a bit of fat and there may be a bit of riches around, but the one thing that has made Bond survive is that anybody who has anything to do with it is not lazy. We do very complicated stunts. Many, many people have said, well, you could do that stunt with a model. That is totally true. We could do it with a model, and it would be much, much cheaper. But we have a deep conviction that one of the excitements, if you go and see a Bond picture and you see a stunt that happens to amuse you or impress you, what impresses you is that you know that wasn't a model. That was for real. The basic plots of all Bond pictures are highly sophisticated, but you must tell it in international terms. Adventure excitement, pretty girls, laughs, thrills, suspense, all part of our youth, all part of something that, to a large extent, the cinema has lost. We try to put those things back. Inevitably, one, most of the scenes we write for James Bond are situations that we have been in ourselves, but where I neither had the nerve to do, or I didn't think up until the next day what I should have done. And that is a real enormous pleasure. I've been arrested by the Russians. I have been in, um, I spent a lot of nights in a lot of jails. I had a fairly complicated war. None of it, none of it did I do James Bondian things. And I now say, ah, but taking myself back to that situation, if I had been a genius, 
such as James Bond is, and as courageous as James Bond, and as bright as James Bond, this is what I ought to have done, and here we've got the situation. The war would have been over much quicker if James Bond had been in charge. 